Out and with investors on edge over Greece, many worry about what would actually happen if the country is forced to leave the eurozone. Here is what one analyst said on Squawk Box Asia earlier today. There ain't no um, orderly exit. The only exit is, is disorderly, and it is extremely disorderly. And that, to me, is a very, very, very high hurdle um, for anybody considering the, uh, the, the potential exit strategy here. All right, and let's uh, get some analysis and perspective from Michel Jouvet, partner and chief economist at Bordier C. Well, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us. You are based in Geneva, so you obviously understand the rumblings happening in the Eurozone. Uh, it seems increasingly certain that there can't be an orderly uh, exit of Greece from the Eurozone. Take us through what your thinking is and what investors should do in this rush to safety. Well, nothing is certain, as you know, with Europe, because because Europe is moving by crisis, crisis by crisis. So probably this crisis will push Europe to go further into another development. Mm. But as far as Greece is concerned, today is an important day because normally the government is going to try to be f to a sort of new coalition, technocrat uh, coalition. Mm. Um, but we'll have an answer this afternoon. I don't think we're going to have a government in Greece today. So that means probably the next step is next month when we'll have a new election in, in Greece. Mm. And then we'll have the decision of the people of Greece saying, yes, we want to remain in the Europe Eurozone, oh no, we want to go out. So uh, Europe is moving with step by step, and that's why markets are quite afraid because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Right, right, right. And say hi to Becky. Uh, Michel, Michel, we saw some big declines in the equity markets yesterday. And in, uh, in Spain, for instance, the finance minister there was saying that the markets are moving in step with the concerns about Greece, not the concerns about Spain, for instance. Is that the case, or is it a broader concern about peripheral Europe that's really driving things low this week? I think, you, you know, markets uh, are very correlated. So when we talk about the Greek problem, everybody thinks Spain or Italy is the same problem. Actually, problems are very different in these countries. I mean, mm. if you take the debt to GDP ratio of Spain, it's smaller than the US debt to GDP ratio. So mm. you cannot compare Spain to, to Greece. Uh, but anyway, mar markets are connected. So when people are thinking about the Eurozone exit by Greece, they're thinking about the contagion and, and saying, yes, who's going to be next? Um, if we have a problem in Spain, probably Spain will go out. I I don't think this is a scenario. I think if we, have, if we have a Greece exit from the Eurozone, then Europe will react as usually when there is an intense crisis and will bring back money through either the ECB, through the European fund they have created just a few months ago. So we have enough money in Europe to make the ring fencing on the other countries. So I suppose this crisis will be an interesting crisis for Europe. Yeah, I mean, I, but, but judging from the market impact so far, it doesn't seem like it's going to be contained within uh, the walls of Europe because Jim O'Neill famously said China can create the economic activity that Greece does within about an 11 and a half weeks or so. But still, it seems like global markets are so interlinked and the banking system at, at this time is going to probably take is going to probably take a big hit because deleveraging is what Asia is really concerned about. You, you're right. But if you, if you look at the exposure of the European banks on, Greece, on the public debt in Greece, it's relatively small. So the losses made uh, through the European banks will be smaller and easy to, to adjust. So I don't think Greece is a big problem. The question is how people are reacting psychologically speaking uh, looking at these problems and, mm. uh, and that's why markets are correlated. The problem for other nations in the world is if the eurozone is and it is in a recession today but if this recession deepens then that means less exports for China, that means less exports for Australia, that means less export even for the US companies yeah. and that means a global recession. So the problem in Europe is very important but the problem is in the same time we have a China which is slowing down very very fast, we have the US economy which is losing momentum and and the problem is that we have this global slowdown and all economies are so much connected to, to today that one, when one country or one big zone is suffering, the other are suffering altogether. This, yeah. is, this is the globalization. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, so Michelle, what's the correct broad investment strategy, bearing all that in mind? Well, today uh, everybody is trying to, say, to find uh, what is the safe haven. Uh, the question is very complicated because uh, safe haven were supposed to be government bonds before. But as you know, government bonds in Europe are no more safe haven. So uh, probably people are rushing for cash again and looking at uh, uh, very solid uh, assets. Um, but the surprise today is to see gold price, which is falling. So mm. even gold, who was considered as a very safe haven before, is, is losing steam. So um, I think the, the investor will, will remain very uh, frightened because um, if you're... If 
if the conclusion of the, this crisis in Europe comes to a weakening of the euro, I think we're heading for another uh, war in, in, in currencies around the world because mm -hmm. the US will not stay with, the, with a strong dollar. So if the eurozone starts to push down the euro, then you, you will have a reaction from, from the USA and the central bank in the USA. So mm. that means uh, ha having this currency war again uh, heading towards the end of the year uh, is, is quite frightening for investors. Yeah, great point, mm. given that despite the euro shores, there seems to be a reluctance on the part of a dollar as long as at this time as well. Right. Right. We're going to talk about that in just a bit uh, in our Forex discussion. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Michel Jouvet there from Bortier SC.